So, if I'm understanding everything correctly, Vanille and her lies are responsible for everything ever that's bad in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome. My name is Preach and we are shooting our journey throughout FF13 and all the single player FFs on this pathway to discover the legacy of this franchise. And we are... <sighs> oh, man. <laughs> Keeping up with the story is starting to become a little difficult. Let me put it that way. It's starting to become a little difficult. It was bad enough with the weird nomenclature. Lassi, Falsi, Seath, Seath Lassi, Falsi. I'm a Lassi, but this, this, the, the Falsi told to made me a Lassi, which may make me a Seath, or it may make me an Ashtray, which may then become a Frisbee person. Ah, <laughs> and then we wake up and Ragnarok's happening, and Cocoon's happening, and we're going to see a Falsi. Okay, let me break it down for you. Our journey into the Grand Pulse has been unusual. I think this is the makings of the end game of FF13, but maybe not, as we went to this place called the Plains, which was very open and contained a lot of high-level enemies and some low-level enemies. And it's like, okay, this is kind of like a multi-leveled zone. We're probably going to return to it later. But then we got very quickly railroaded back into corridors. And I was like, okay... It kind of went open world and then was like, here's a bit of open world, kind of. It's one zone and then you're going to go back to the normal stuff. And I'm like, right, okay. So does all the end game kind of... And I'm thinking about the end game despite the fact that we've got, I think, only two chapters left of the story because the story segments in the data log are by chapter and there's only two slots left. So I'm guessing we're near the end of the story. Uh, but... By the by, we're back in corridors, and our mission is to find this old home of Fang and Vanille, who are from the Pulse. And so to do that, we're, for some reason, and this is never clarified, and it's so weird, it's bizarre. We are hunting down one of the Pulse's foul seas, which is a worm slash flying serpent but lives underground and digs tunnels in its spare time, but occasionally goes and has a fly around in the sky. But we're going to go there. And for, for the life of me, I have no idea why. I, <laughs> I can't tell you how much I tried by reading the date log as to why are we doing this exactly? Why have we decided to go and see this Falsi? And then they kind of hint... That we're going to hitch a ride on the Falsi, which is essentially, for all intents and purposes, a god, right? These these Falsies, where they be at the cocoon side of the planet or at the pulse side of the planet, control everything from the weather to the food production. They control all the elements we require to survive. And we're going to hitch a ride on it. So I'm like, wait a minute, are we doing like Dune here? Is that what we're doing? We're, we're going to summon a sandworm like Paul Atreides and we're going to ride across the plains. Whatever. Uh, so we head into the mines. I will point out at this point, I am either, and this has never happened in any of the FFs, and we've only got five to play of the base games, right? We haven't done the expansions yet, like, you know, 13-2 and so on and 10-2, etc. We've been doing the base games. We've got five remaining, just number five. At no point have I found myself outside of the very beginnings of the game which happened a little bit in eight if i remember correctly to be under leveled but it feels that way that we are not just slightly under leveled but like dramatically underpowered for some reason and i'm not sure why i'm trying to figure it out without spoiling myself and play it like a, you know i'll be at home couch gaming because we keep running into enemies that just have astronomical amounts of hp and can devastate us in a matter of seconds and I was talking about this, and some people were like, well, you did skip a few fights near the Grand Plains Tunnel because it had us running backwards and forwards. You remember from, like, a couple of episodes ago, is it had us running backwards and forwards through the same area. And I'm like, right, but if I think about that, we probably missed maybe, if I'm being generous, 12 fights? That doesn't account for what we're seeing here. Like, 12 fights of experience is not make or break whether you're underpowered. But we're very weak. Put it as you want. And we're getting no money in order to upgrade our accessories. We do get a collection, a, a smattering of upgrade materials, but nowhere near enough to sort of radically change how powerful our characters are. 
and we are spending our experience, but at this point, experience levels are very, very expensive comparative to the XP we're earning. So, there were some suggestions like the game intended you to farm the planes a bit. That's never happened before. If that was the case, it's never happened in any FF before. It's like, okay, now this is like a spot where you should go and farm experience for a while like for a good while like probably a couple of hours or something to get on to par with the game and i say this because i fought a juggernaut this fight uh took 17 minutes maybe i could have swapped in another character to make that more efficient or whatever but based on the situation that we were dealing with with the amount of damage it puts out it was eradicating members of our team uh drafted in hope he was very susceptible to being one shot even though he's up to the same level as everybody else because the experience is equal amongst all the members of the team. Um, it took 17 minutes to defeat this enemy. And I got barely anything for it. Uh, no reward, nothing. It was like just a fight that was happening. I actually thought this was a boss in the previous episode, but it's not. It's kind of a standard enemy. Uh, and later on, simpler fights were giving way more experience and taking like a minute to defeat. Uh, very, very strange. So I'm, I'm very aware of this seemingly weakened state my team is in. By the way, getting back to the story, we, we're in the mines, and you can see the Fal C, which is unnamed, just rolling around, like spinning and coggersing around the room, doing all these kinds of crazy things. And I was excited for this. I was like, oh, this is probably a big boss fight, or some sort of communication with the Fal C, like listening to them, speaking to them, although they do mention that most of them don't speak, like only Eden speaks, or Bartholomew speaks, and things like that. Uh, but some of them speak, some of them don't. So I was expecting something to happen there. No. <laughs> no. It's the biggest blue balls ever. And FF13 is a little guilty of this in a lot of places. Is It kind of builds to something. And nothing really happens out of the back of it. Uh, so we finally get to the Fal C, which... For some reason... And yes, in the previous part of the game, Hope did get onto a juggernaut and sort of control it. But in this instance, he jumps on a juggernaut and jumps down in front of the Fal C. And he's about to die when all of the juggernauts decide to be friendly. And all of them build a wall together to prevent the rolling Fal C from moving anymore. Why? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea why this happens or what the context for it is. But they just do it and they stop the Fal C. And because they have stopped the Falci in its tracks, the Falci doesn't respond in any way. It doesn't get angry. It doesn't, like, destroy the Juggernauts or anything because he's just rolling around apparently having a merry old time. Is we can then, like, jump inside it? Because we don't see the characters sit on it or anything. And then there's just a black screen and they've transported us to a different zone. And then you just get off it. You don't see a cutscene of it rolling. You don't have any form of communication. It's just, like... Here, there it is. You walk up to it and click a button. Fade to black. Now you're in a different map. It's just a taxi service. It's very much... It, it's it's actually got... This is interesting. It's just occurred to me. It has way less animation than riding the bugs in Hollow Knight for fast travel. It's just a loading screen. That's all it is. Which was very odd. Very, very odd. But as this is happening, it's time for more exposition to expand on our universe of Final Fantasy XIII. Okay. Ah, we did say yesterday, the only person who is missing an Eidolon is Vanille. Uh, so that will only happen in a moment of despair or extreme rage as the Eidolons come to either. They thought the Eidolons would come and kill you because you've like reached the end of your pit of despair. In a sort of like Endwalker vibe. Uh, but in fact, they probably come to inspire you to push forward. Either way, Vanille is about to hit that point. Why? Because she's a liar. Again. <laughs> Previously, it was revealed that Vanille was Ragnarok, and she perhaps committed genocide and eradicated a bunch of people, and uh, we glossed over it, and it was very strange. But now it turns out that Fang has got her memory back. Why? No idea. When did this happen? Who knows? <laughs> it's a mystery, but she's got her memory back. And her memory has revealed to her that Vanille was not Ragnarok. She was Ragnarok. She's the one that did it. And Vanille did nothing and for some reason decided to protect Fang from the truth by saying she was Ragnarok and Fang's wonderful and special or whatever it is. But Fang's now got her memory back 
And she's like, oh, but I was Ragnarok. I was the one that, that like cracked Cocoon. I did all those things. And Vanille, you didn't do anything. In fact, we kind of tried to protect you because you were so young or whatever. And we would take care of the focus. We knew the focus was to crack Cocoon, which is, of course, what the the Maker's followers wanted. The Falci, that's what they wanted. But they tried to protect Vanille, is what I'm getting out of this, by not having her take part in anything whatsoever. And Fang did it instead. But of course, the focus got completed, so they both got turned to ashtrays. Because the focus job was done. I'm like, is there anything this girl says that's true? Anything at all? Because Fang rightly points out, you don't need to keep lying to us. Like, you lie to us about everything. I literally can't... Because even more lies are exposed. Even more. Because it then turns out... <laughs> That at some point, Sarah, the fiancé to Snow, the sister of Lightning, had this massive heart-to-heart, one-on-one conversation with Vanille at some point after the uh, revelation of the nearby Falci, after the power plant incident. And they, on the beach, like, the best and long-term of friends. Like, uh, Vanille casts herself to her knees to say to sort of apologize for the fact that Sarah's now become a Lassie. And all this is happening. And Vanille's like, oh yeah, I totally knew Sarah. And you're like, what the, what? You know Sarah? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. We, we... <laughs> it's so absurd. It's like, oh yeah, I totally know who Sarah is. And Snow's like, wait, you you know Sarah? She's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were great friends. We spent the day by the beach together. Uh, Sarah had been crying that day because obviously she was going to break up with you because she'd become a lassie and it was my fault and I bumped into her and we were talking about it and we cried together and I like threw myself on my knees and I was begging her and I'm like and you never felt the need to mention that you you know Sarah the main focus of the mission of like the entire team to free Sarah for, like for the most part is to get to Sarah and free her from this burden you never thought at any point to... No, it's another lie. And I, I will always go down in hell for saying this, but it's absolutely true. A lie by omission is still a lie. If you lie, but if you just don't tell people relevant information that you know is relevant, absolutely you are a liar. 100%. So even more of Vanille's lies become exposed. At this point, I think Vanille is the maker. It's the only way I can r stitch this whole thing together is that Vanille is actually the maker and she's manipulating everybody to be on their path i am fully expecting a total plot twist where vanille turns out to be the worst the most horrible person in the world i will point out there's a big thing about her voice like on youtube and on twitch like her voice uh, but we watched an interview with a voice actor if you've not seen this i'll ask bex to link it down below watch it it's the most bizarre thing you'll ever see it took place i guess on an australian youtube channel with a guy who runs a space YouTube channel uh, and pretends to be an android in the interview. It's nuts. It's absolutely nuts. It's so odd. And on that in that interview, she does say she found her direction very strange. Uh, that when she came in, the first thing the director told her was like, okay, look, you're going to need to know how to do these sounds you know what sounds i'm talking about because they wanted it to be very japanese anime girl is what they wanted even though apparently the japanese voice actor for anil is nothing for vanille is nothing like that at all uh, in any way they did this for the western audience that obviously has some fetishization of um um anime girls let's let's be fair on that okay that's not attacking anybody that's the truth uh so they wanted to do that. and she does the noises and you see the face and like the the gesturing she has to do to create these noises and you're like okay <laughs> and she's very much aware of like well i'm being paid to do a job this is what they've asked of me this is the job this is this is the job i've been uh, hired to and i want my paycheck so she does it and she's like yeah it was a little strange <laughs> it was a little weird but she likes the character so it's fine but the whole interview is bizarre to put it to put it that way as we came to the conclusion of all these revelations and my mind is just spinning with like what is going on either vanille is is the maker and she's the ultimate bad guy of the whole game or we just have this character that is just a plot device. That's all Vanille is. Is Vanille is just a plot device so they can have revelations. Because otherwise nothing about her character makes sense. She's been lying since day one. 
about things that don't need to be lied about. I gave her the benefit of the doubt earlier on is that perhaps she's just like, I don't, I don't want confrontation. I don't like confrontation. I want everybody to be happy, smiley. So I'll take all the burdens for them so they can be happy and joyful and not feel pain. But at this point, it's just reached levels of absurdity where everything she's ever said in the game is practically not true. And it constantly just is like, and then Vanille did this, and then Vanille was there, and then Vanille did this as well, and then Vanille kept this a secret, and then Vanille tried to, to hide this from somebody. Never end. It's like Urian J times 25. Absolutely absurd. So at this point, I'm suspecting she's either going to turn out to be a bad guy, and if she doesn't, then she's the most insane plot device ever just to keep having some sort of like... <gasps> moment throughout the story we've just reached a bizarre tower that we apparently have to travel through which is also protected by another foul sea i'm fully expecting at this point in 13 that nothing happens at the end <laughs> it's just going to be a tower full of mobs and corridors and then at the end it's like and you reach the other side okay but i i mean realistically there should be a decent boss fight at the end of this that's what i'm going to do next is heading into this tower it's called tuari's tower oh vanille's yeah of course you guys keep asking me about it uh vanille's eidolon hector hecton chair apparently this is a boss in final fantasy 14 but needless to say i went <laughs> we will be called hector from now on hecton chair hecton chair something like that hecton share Something along those lines is what she got. I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with the old classics. There's plenty of them that they used out and out again. We haven't seen Leviathan yet. Although there's definite hints of Leviathan in a lot of the like cutscenes of looking at the war of the... I forget what the war is called. The war of transgression or something like that. Uh, that happens. So we probably have Leviathans around. But we're going with this. You know, we've got Shiva. We've got Bahamut. We've got a lot of the old favorites. And then suddenly there's Hexon Chair. And there's Broomhilda, who <laughs> joined in. I think they picked the ones they thought they could make the coolest Transformers out of and just went with that. Like, that will do. That is a solid effort. But yeah, we got it. I haven't summoned it yet. I'm sure it's fun. Uh, but again, a little bit of a head scratcher as to like, okay, so Hope gets Alexander, who makes sense he's a wall, uh, a laser cannon wall. And Vanille gets Hecton Chair. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sure. This game... At this point, this game is taking me on a wild, wild ride, man. A wild ride. And whatever the culmination of the story is, I don't know. I, d I know a lot of people ask me, are you going to play like 13-2? And I think there's a 13-3. Yeah, probably. Probably. Because it's just so bizarre. But I I'm waiting for something that sort of ties it all together in, in a nice, pretty bow. Will I get that? I don't know. I don't know. But thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next episode, guys. Bye-bye.